I've got the ideal electronics workbench solution for an electronics lab and it's under $300. Hey everybody, Dave Johnson here with Aggressive Fun. Today we're looking at electronics lab workbenches to solve the issue of how do, how do you utilize your space the very best. I've been doing electronics labs even when I was a little kid in third grade, I remember in my bedroom I had a cabinet and I had a desktop space and I had all of the, the electronic gadgets that I had torn apart and couldn't fix or put back together. I had them in bins and was organizing all of that stuff. So even clear back then, I wanted to have a workplace in place that made it easy and convenient to work on electronic stuff. So fast forward to the to present time I have a new lab and today I'm not going to show you the whole lab give you a tour of everything because it's not set up yet but I've discovered this setup for the workbench station that is modular that uses e easily available components uh, workbench, actual workbench, and then the shelves that are going to go along with this. And it does actually keep it to $299. I kid you not, $299. So how did I get here? Well, clear back, I took the lab I mentioned, the kind of bedroom lab that I had as a really young kid, morphed into my first real electronics lab when I purchased my first home several years ago and the basement was unfinished I had a, a crude setup down there and I worked for a company right out of college for 10 years and in that 10 years time I actually at the beginning of that 10 years time I was able to buy a house and then shortly after that the basement got finished and it ended up that there was a room that was available so that I could have my office and my electronics lab in that room. So here's, here's a picture of that one. In the picture there is our youngest son, Jordan, and me. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> and we're debating what to do with that shattered pig. And I don't know that he broke it. The fact that he's standing there kind of indicates that he did. But in the end, we actually use, there's a lot of pieces there, but in the end, we actually got it fixed. Got it all glued back together and, and it was a success. So an electronics lab can be used for all kinds of good things. <laughs> the, the, in this particular basement, the cement only went halfway up for the foundation, which made it really nice because the, the foundation wall was thicker than the actual wall that you utilize that little step in the C-mount foundation to hold up bookshelves. So we filled up the whole wall full of shelves and then in front of that you can see my two tables there. They're in an L shape so it's two different tables and that was formed the basis of my work space. And you can see the oscilloscope there. I get my my uh, Metcal solder station there and then I get the drill press in there too. Now I don't know why I didn't put it over to the right. I can't remember what was over there because my computer is right in front of me to the left of the drill press. So I don't know why the drill press is right there. Uh, it's okay and if especially if you're doing uh, plastic housing drilling or something like that with plastics and things but if you're drilling metal, you don't want that close to your oscilloscope and all the rest of your printed circuit board assembly area. Having filings and stuff flying around in your electronics is not a good idea. So that's an easy improvement. But anyway, that was the, the first real lab that I had. And actually, that's where I started my business years ago. Um, couldn't have that scope and the, the Metcal and the equipment that I had at the time. I didn't have a project that was funding having those pieces of equipment. So I had already started my business. That was the first lab space. I then moved 
out of my basement, actually got a real office space that had an electronics lab and assembly area and, and a warehouse area and all of those kinds of things. For some reason, I thought I took a picture of that one. I, I can't find the picture of that one. But it became the beginning of and the first time I utilized this idea that I'm going to show you right now. What I ended up doing is I had that table that I showed you in the photo that was an eight foot long by, I believe it's 30, 30 inches wide banquet type table. And it's 30 inches off the ground. So it's a little less than a meter tall. And you utilized regular office chairs with that height. Now, I've worked for multiple companies throughout my career. And one of them had the assembler slash technician benches at that height. Everywhere else I've worked has always had the taller 36 inch or roughly one meter high workbenches. And that's, it's really um, more productive, it's helpful. If a person's gonna be working at that kind of a thing all day long, it can be very beneficial for lessening fatigue and making it easier to move around when you need to. The thing that I really like about it is in that kind of a setup, you could be all day assembling a circuit board under a microscope and be totally comfortable. But also, if you were doing a box build or you're doing a teardown or you're repairing something and you need to move around, be able to get parts, be able to get tools, and you're not sitting the whole time, then it facilitates that too. So, what I'm going to show you today, my benches are actually 36 inches tall, and I like that. The only thing that makes it different, and they're adjustable, this could go to 30 inches, but I like the 30, 36 inch height. The only thing that makes it a little bit different is you then need to have chairs that'll go that high. A regular office chair won't go high enough to then slide underneath of a 36 inch tall workbench. And they're, I, I don't know that they're that much more expensive, but they are the kind of chair that you want to have a foot ring um, down on the bottom, the color foot ring or shoe ring, where you, you put your shoes on that ring because you won't be able to get them cleared to the floor and you don't want them dangling. So that, there, that's the only difference. The rest of it just makes it easier to get your job done, move around, whatever kind of project you're doing just makes it a lot easier. So that's what I've set up here today. As I went through this process, I looked at different workbenches. There's three ways that I was going to do this. Number one, and I'm sure if you're searching, if you've seen how other people set up their work areas, there's a lot of people that will build custom benches. And that's good, and you get exactly what you want, but you still have the expense of all of the lumber, and plywood is not cheap. And you have the time, a huge time involvement to put something like that together. I, I didn't have the time to do that. So I went searching for another solution. So number two in my whole search was I found the Husky style of workbenches that you can get at Home Depot, or you can get them off of Amazon. They're available at other places other than just Home Depot. And what I discovered with them was they are um, they're nice workbenches, but they're more expensive, and they, they don't have as thick a top as this other, the um, Ultra HD, the Seville Classics, and the Seville is easier to adjust. And here's, here's a description. So here's the benches. I bought the two because at the time I only knew of the Husky because I'd seen it at the Home Depot. But since finding the Husky, I've discovered that I needed more of them. And so this is an Ultra HD brand, and you find these at Sam's Club. What I discovered is you can see really obviously the difference. You have a thinner wood work top, workbench top, on the Husky model than you do on the Ultra HD. 
which is nice. And the one thing that really, really, that that, that thick, the thicker top with more strength in it, one thing that it gives you that's a huge advantage is the Husky then still puts this support all the way across and it's on both sides, the back, the front and the back. Initially, I didn't think it would be an issue, but when you look at the Ultra HD, there it's almost non-existent, which what I realized is this is really nice if you're going to have a bench that you're going to sit at as well as stand. If you're going to sit at the Husky, you won't be able to be as high. Your chair won't be able to adjust as much because your your tops of your legs are going to run into that support. I haven't done it yet. I don't know if I'll even care with based on the preference that I'm going to like when I sit. But it's nice knowing that it's not there on the Ultra HD. The Husky is intended now I only I only have one of these. I bought two originally. One of them, after I put it together, one of them wasn't assembled, so I took it back and I got a refund. The, and the main reason is what I've just described, but more importantly than that, the Husky, to buy it at Home Depot, is $299. The Ultra HD, to buy it at Sam's Club, is $209. So it's $90 less which is obviously huge. The other thing that's nice about the Ultra HD is you have these <clears throat> thumb screws or whatever you call them that will more quickly allow you to change the height if you want to have the the height be at a different level those are very quick whereas on the Husky you've got to do the bolts which it's a little less convenient and I'm gonna to have to do it because I ended up doing this high water foot arrangement and you can see the difference there I want to make this one so that they're much closer to the bottom of the leg so I'll do that and then I'll make the adjustment here and then we'll still end up with our 36 inch height for both of these when we're all done that isn't that big a deal so this the Husky is mainly going to be with drill press a uh, mini mill, metal mill and lathe that I have and then a sanding unit that I have, maybe the 3D printer. So the Husky, they're going to be the kinds of things that you you basically always want to stand up while you're doing. So it won't be a big deal. And then all of the rest of them are going to be this guy. So that sitting, standing, not a problem either way. They'll all be at the, the 36 inch height. It'll make it really easy to be able to sit underneath of there at whatever height you want to. Now one thing too that hopefully you can see this here. The Husky comes clear out to the edge here whereas the Ultra HD is set back. So you actually have more leg room because of that as well. So you can see the difference there. It's quite a lot that the Ultra HD gives you that where it pushes the legs back so that I'm hoping that that actually means you're not banging your knees on it so much that kind of thing and that it makes it um, easier to use overall you can see too there's more structure on the legs and the supports everything about the Husky has more support structure but the Ultra HD given that that top the wood top is so thick it's not needed you don't have to have it you eliminate a lot of metal and thereby you reduce the the cost that's where the ninety dollar cost difference comes into account <clears throat> so it makes it pretty obvious bottom line because of the ultra hd features that allow me to sit and stand very easily and that ninety dollars difference in cost the ultra hd is ended up winning I ended up buying, I have one, two, three, four Ultra HDs and the one Husky. It'll, it'll work just fine the, the way that it is, but it gives me some flexibility. So I'm, I'm glad that I found the Ultra HDs and I hadn't put both of the Huskies together already because the Ultra HD for the stand and sit setup will work better. 
So when I moved out of the basement, I moved into an actual office space. This was the first time that I was in an actual leased office space with an electronics lab. In that one, I moved the tables into the lab and I, used, I bought 30 inch long, 11 inch deep, 72 inch tall shelves. They were white at the time and you could get those at Home Depot. You can't get those anymore. And they were really hard to get from anywhere. I think you can special order them now through Walmart and you can get that size. But this time around, they were harder to get than these two foot wide black ones. Anyway, since that table was 96 inches long, eight feet long, it made it so that three 30 inch shelves fit well behind it. You were only off by six inches. So just there was only a small amount and it didn't really matter. Is it one in and who cares? So that setup worked really well. I got the three put in place. I could do the same kinds of things that I'm doing here, except that I had, I still had the three shelves, but we were two feet longer. Okay. Bowl and the shelves, since they're 30 inches wide, they filled up that space too nicely. I don't have a picture of that one. I, I thought that I did, but I don't have a picture of that lab setup. It, it, uh, I can show you the setup though, because when I moved out of that space, I moved a distance away and moved back into a home and a bedroom in our home. And it was temporarily until I could get this place put in, in place. That one used eight foot long tables, the three white shelves, the 30 inches wide worked really well. That's one of the huge benefits of using this kind of an approach is it is modular. You can change your workbench length size. You can change the shelves and the number of shelves that you want to use. You can eliminate them all together. So this one's really cool. I like the, the setup. It isn't perfect. I mean, you're not using the highest quality shelves. You can spend more money on the shelves if you want and have higher quality shelves. Not a problem. I just have, haven't needed them. And then people will say, oh, but look, underneath you have all of that wasted space of shelves. Well, no, they fill up with current ongoing projects, other test equipment that can't fit up here, parts bins, past projects that we're gonna do yet another follow on video of or another tear down of. Great place to store all of that kind of stuff. So it ends up being well used. So let's take a look at my lab just before I, I did this new setup and moved into this lab. Okay. This is what I've been working with for six years, a little over six years. You've got the test bench, assembly bench, all the electronic R&D type stuff, soldering iron, scope, power supplies, all those kinds of things. And if you've watched the other videos that I've done in the past, you'll recognize that, that a lot of that right there is the background and the circuit boards have always been up there and you can see a lot of those things and here's the table that I work with when I do videos that comes out into the room and this this uh, right over here you can see this 2 by 4 little stand there is what the table sits on and then the the table comes from there out into the room and you'll notice in those other videos that's what I used for videoing and then I have my office so three functions in this one room office youtube videos and assembly testing r d electronic engineering product development all in the same room you can see my toolbox down there on the floor um, a ch very challenging setup I've got my air compressor packing all of the envelopes what not for items to ship out development computer uh, with the microchip programmer for pick devices all of those things so it has been a challenge it has worked overall but it's been a real challenge to try to manage everything in this one tight space
there you see something that was really efficiently used. Yes, it looks like a mess, but we aren't going to be critical about each other's messes. I've seen electronics labs and electronic workbench spaces that are way worse than that. So we're not going to be critical of each other's messes. So you can see where I was and it, it's the kind of thing where you you utilize your space, you utilize what you have and make the best of it and it works. You can, you can do that and then when you overflow you just move it to the, the garage or the next bedroom or wherever it is that you have space, not a problem. Okay, so and that's one of the beauties of this setup. You don't have to have the workbench that I showed you previously. You can have a table, card table, banquet table, six foot table, eight foot table, any of those will work depending on the space that you have. These are six foot workbenches just because that's what was available. You can, I did notice you can get longer ones, especially the Husky. I know that the Husky comes in an eight foot long version. It might have been 10. Anyway, it was longer than six feet. But the problem is, is that nobody had that in stock and I wanted to get it here locally. I didn't want to have to ship them because they weigh 125 pounds. So I didn't want to do that. And again, the Husky was way more expensive than this Ultra HD. So I'm going to go into a, a, a close-up mode here. What I've done, if I can get this all in the, the view here. This is the tall chair. That's the, the shoe ring. So if you're going to have your height up here at 36 inches, you want to have one of these chairs that's the taller because a regular desk chair won't do it. Okay. What, what the big huge advantage here is, now ignore this shelf on this side for a minute. I've added that in. I've never had that like that in the past, but this guy is going to go right there and then I can have my tools available. I think I prefer this kind of a setup for tools rather than if I had a big board in the back and I had what I call the homicide um, tool peg board <laughs> because you've got all your tools up there with the outlines and you know when the tools gone it looks like there's a dead tool spot <laughs> so I call it the homicide tool peg board. Anyway they're not very efficient unless it's nut drivers and screwdrivers. They're very efficient if you've got those two because they're you know they're they're put in really close to each other and the one inch square um, slots holes for the pegs don't then take up extra space I just, I don't have the space for them. So I'm going to put the toolbox, this guy over here. Then, this, so what it becomes is you've got the six foot bench here from the supply to over here where you can see on this side. So six feet right here. These are two feet and there's three of them obviously. And it makes it so that I can put my tool or the, the, electronic components bins here and I'll have them all the way across then there's another shelf that'll go up here on top of this one and so I can put books or whatever up there then you can have scopes the soldering iron will be down here and um, space for like a power supply and the cool thing about this setup is you can see here where these shelves uh, the set of shelves has a permanent mounted shelf at the 30 inch height. That works great if you've got the 30 inch tall table, done deal. Like this one then you're just straight across and you put your your equipment off of the main work area and it gives you a lot more room to do stuff. Well you'll notice that there's no holes to put your shelf down here easily. So what I did I just cut two by fours and if you put a two by four on each side it turns out that it's the exact height to put your shelf in. Then your supplies and your scope and whatever else doesn't they don't take up your bench space. So it gives you a lot more room. I noticed on some examples that I saw 
the equipment ended up staying out on the workbench and taking up space in front. So every time you're you're changing projects or whatever, you're having to put all of the equipment away and then get it all back out again. We don't want to do that. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do the same thing for the toolbox. Put my two by fours in there. Put this shelf in. And then this guy. <clears throat> Fits right in there. Beauty. Then, when you get it spaced here, you have your lid Put right out to the edge there. Drawers open. Drawers open. You have all your tools right there at your fingertips. So, workbench, tools, parts, bins, equipment and then other supplies. This guy, I have a, a dowel and a rod. They're gonna be mounted up above here. I'm gonna screw a little mount, and then I'm gonna put all my, my wire right up there. I've never had that available either, so that's gonna be cool. So, there you have it. My ideal workbench. Oh, and up on top, I have the organizer bins, there's two different sizes there, and I have a bunch of them that are already full that will be very at home up on top. So anyway, $299, you got the Ultra HD workbench from Sam's, you've got the 2 foot by 11 inch by uh, 72 inch shelves from Walmart and there you go you can put that in pretty much any room in garage basement whatever makes it really nice and I'm going to enjoy populating this thing get it up getting it up and rolling as I mentioned before when I do finally have the whole lab set up I'll give you a tour uh, I have three of these um, workstations that will be set up and then I have another two that are more unique for different types of tools and activities. This will be the workbench. I hope that was helpful. I hope that it fits within your budget. You can see how you can mix and match. You can eliminate shelves. You can add in shelves. The shelves are the basically $29 a piece. And if you put the three of those, that's roughly 90 bucks for the three. And then you've got 209 for the, the Ultra HD workbench. So there you go, 299. And if you look at those other benches, this, there's especially there's one that I saw where they said that the material cost was $250. Well, and that's not including any labor time whatsoever, any cost for labor. So this would be way cheaper. Even if you were only getting paid $5 an hour, you still would save a boatload on this kind of setup. Now understand if you're doing this all yourself and it, you're not doing it as a business, you're just doing it for you and your hobby or do it yourself, electronic design, work area, what kind of thing you want to cut costs wherever you can. Sure, I understand and then, you know, whatever works for you, do it. Okay. As always, let's go find some great ideas and make some awesome products. Thanks for watching. See you next time.